Coast financial independence is the dream that you could live anywhere on the world, working when you feel like it, but not having to worry about saving for the future. It's a dream that might sound too good to be true, but in this video, I'm going to be showing you the exact steps that I took to achieve coast financial independence in just two years. I will show you exactly how much money I saved, where I invested it, and what recommendations I have for anybody pursuing Coast Fi. Today, I would never need to save another dollar and I would be totally set for retirement age. And my goal is to get you there too. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself and assume that everybody knows what Coast Financial Independence is, so let's get into some background. If you're familiar at all with financial independence, it's most likely through FIRE, or Financial Independence Retire Early. This movement follows the idea that by saving the most money you possibly can while you're young, you can effectively retire much younger than previous generations even thought possible, some people retiring as young as 35 or 40. While that is a very admirable goal for people who really want to retire young and are willing to sacrifice their 20s and 30s saving every penny they possibly can, that lifestyle isn't for everybody. And I think there's actually a better way to achieve effectively the same goal without needing to save as much money up front. Coast financial independence. Coast fi or barista fi or coasting financial independence, they all mean the same thing. But basically the idea is that you save up enough money that if you invest that money in the stock market, you will have enough money to retire on at retirement age. That means you don't have enough money saved up to retire today, but you do have enough that your financial future is secured. Now right off the bat, that can sound a little bit underwhelming until you really dive into what that means for your lifestyle. If you don't have to save for your future, you could just move somewhere with a low cost of living and work a job that just covers your basic expenses. One idea for this is moving somewhere with a beach and teaching surfing lessons all day, or traveling the world and living as a digital nomad for a couple years. The reason this movement is also called Barista-Fi is because you don't have to worry about getting a high stress, high paying job once you've reached coast -Fi. Instead, you can take a lower effort job, which you just enjoy doing just to pay the bills. And a lot of people consider a barista to be this kind of job. The other huge advantage to Coast Fi is you know you are set for retirement. So you can live like a completely free soul, do whatever you want, while also knowing that your future is financially secure. Finally, by doing Coast Fi rather than financial independence retire early, you can avoid one of the biggest pitfalls that people encounter when they retire early. They get bored. I think most people who seek FIRE will probably retire for around six months to a year after they're able to, but then they're gonna go back and get just a lower paying job that they enjoy doing more because they have the freedom to do that now that they're financially secure. But with Coast Fi, you can do the same thing right now just with less money saved up. I think most people with FIRE are really just seeking the freedom to do what they want and not have to worry about finances. With Coast Fi, you can get the exact same outcome, but with less upfront effort. Okay, so let's say you're on board with the goal of reaching Coast Fi, but how do you actually get there? How do you know if you have enough money saved up for retirement, and what exactly can you do to set yourself up for Coast Fi a few years down the road? Well, let's start by talking about how much money you need to have saved and invested. And that second part is the key here because you need to invest your money. So let's figure this out by looking at a compound interest calculator. The first thing you'll need to do is determine how much your expenses are each month. This is going to determine how much money you need in retirement. Now, as much as this may pain some people to hear, this means that you need to track your expenses and have a written budget so you know how much money you're spending every month and you can forecast how much you'll need in retirement. Once you have this number, and just for an example, we'll say it's $50,000 a year, you can start plugging in some numbers to a compound interest calculator. There's a rule of thumb in personal finance called the 4% rule, which says that whatever money you have invested for retirement, retirement, you can withdraw 4% of that every single year without depleting your retirement account because your investments are earning income over time. So this means if we take our $50,000 a year in expenses and divide that by 4%, we're left with $1.25 million. That is how much money we need actively invested in the stock market in order to pull off $50,000 every year without running out of money and accounting for inflation. Now, yes, that is a lot of money to save up, but I can assure you I do not have $1.25 million lying around, and yet I have reached Coast Financial Independence. The key is we don't need over a million dollars right now. We need it at the age that we're gonna retire, for most people around age 65. So let's just use my own personal numbers to help illustrate this point. Like I said earlier, the first step to understanding where you stand on your Coast Fi journey is to track your expenses. You can use an app for this like Mint or You Need a Budget, which will automatically track all your transactions by linking them to a bank account or a credit card. But I personally just track the transactions manually using an app called EveryDollar. By tracking my expenses each month, I can see exactly how much money I'll have left over to put toward retirement, as well as how much I'll need in retirement to cover my eventual expenses. Now I do this particular tracking in an Excel spreadsheet 
spreadsheet, but you could also use an app like Personal Capital to do it for you. So I started tracking my expenses diligently back in June of 2019. So let's look at that spreadsheet and how it walked me through my journey to achieving Coast Financial Independence. So it all starts with a budget, and this is my budget right here. You can see here in green, I have my income highlighted for my paycheck and my rental income. In blue highlighted here are all the different savings that I have. And then the red here is my actual expenses for the month. So you can see I have it broken out into recurring expenses and then just normal expenses. And you can see then at the bottom, if I total up my entire budget for the month, it comes out to zero dollars. This is called zero based budgeting because between all the expenses you have and all the money that moves into savings, you should have zero dollars unaccounted for at the end of each month. So if we look at my total expenses and my total savings and investments each month, we can see that around 41.10% of my income goes to either savings or investments every month. Now having a really high savings rate is part of the reason why I was able to achieve Coast Fi so quickly. But if we go on from here, we can also look at the next tab in this sheet, which tracks my estimated net worth over time. So you can see on the left side here, we have the date, and then we have all these different columns showing how much my net worth will be increased by each of these different categories. So we have home equity, we have student loans, we have Roth IRA, 401k, brokerage, and then my total net worth on the right side. So if we zoom out a little bit and go to this month, which is December, 2020, we can see that my net worth was estimated to be $132,000 from when I first started this Excel spreadsheet around June of 2019. Now I have this chart here where I plotted my estimated net worth over time. And then on that chart, I also include my actual net worth. So you can see here, this is my estimated net worth over time. And you can see that it has this exponential curve here. And that's because I'm counting on my net worth increasing exponentially due to the compound interest I'll be earning on my investments. Now in this corner here, there's this little orange line here. That is my actual net worth that I've been tracking each month. And you can see it's a little bit higher than the line, mostly because I've had some better investment gains than I was expecting when I first made this sheet. Now, if we go to this last tab here, we can see the actual amount that I have in each of these different categories. And if I go to the very end of this sheet, you can see that my total net worth here is just over $200,000. Now that $200,000 number doesn't exactly represent how much money I have invested because some of that is tied up in the mortgage in the house and some of that is in emergency funds and savings accounts. So I decided up here to add up how much of my net worth is actively invested in the stock market. And you can see here, it's just over $190,000 between my retirement accounts and my taxable brokerage accounts. Now, obviously $190,000 today invested isn't enough for me to retire on today. That would only give me probably around $8,000 a year to live on. But if I were to invest this money for 40 years and not retire until age 65, well, how much money would I have then? Well, we can figure that out pretty easily by looking up a compound interest calculator. And I'll link the calculator I use in the description of this video. So in this compound interest calculator, I can put in what my initial investment is, which in this case, I'll put $191,000. I'll put zero monthly contribution because the idea is you don't have to save any more money toward retirement. I'll put 40 years, since I'm 25 years old, it'll take 40 years for me to reach age 65. And then I'll put in an estimated interest rate of 8%, which is around what the stock market has returned on average over long time horizons in the past. When we run all these numbers together, we can see that in 40 years, I will have over $4 million in retirement, which is more than the one and a quarter million dollars that I needed saved up in order to retire at age 65. This means that at this point, I have achieved coast financial independence and I don't need to save any more money in order to retire and not have to worry about my funds running out. But just to give some examples here, let's look at the minimum I would need saved at age 25 to have one and a quarter million dollars by age 65. So if I lower this number to, let's say $60,000 a year, I would have $1.3 million, which would be enough to achieve Coast Fi. This means that for a 25 year old, $60,000 invested in the stock market means that you are Coast financially independent. Now let's say that you're 30 years old, so you only have 35 years to invest the money. Well, in that case, if you invested $85,000 in the stock market, you would have just over $1.25 million by age 65, which again is enough to be Coast financially independent. Now let's do one more example. Let's say you're 40 years old, so you have 25 years before retirement. Well, in that case, you're going to need to save up a lot more money because you're not having as much of that compound interest working for you early on. So in this case, you would actually need $185,000 invested at age 40 
in order to have just over one and a quarter million dollars by the time you hit age 65. Basically, the younger you can save up a chunk of money to invest in the stock market, the lower your Coast Fi number is going to be. So let me lay out some exact steps that you can take to build up that initial investment. Step one, create a budget. Step two, create a small emergency fund of around one month's expenses. This will keep you from getting knocked back farther while you're trying to save up your money. Step three, contribute to any employer matching funds like a 401k. This is essentially a 100% guaranteed return on investment. Step four, pay off any high interest debt that charges over 4% a year. You're gonna be withdrawing 4% from your retirement accounts each year. So if you're paying that same amount in debt, you're essentially losing out by investing that money instead. Step five, build up your emergency fund to three to six months of expenses. This money is not going to be invested. It's going to be in a safer savings account where you can rely on it if something comes up that's unexpected in your life. Step six is to max out your Roth IRA contributions with $6,000 per year. A Roth IRA is basically the most flexible form of retirement account. So it's what I would recommend if you're young and you want your money to build up as much as possible over time. Step seven, put your remaining money into maxing out any other tax advantaged accounts that are available to you. This could be a 401k or an HSA or whatever accounts you have access to. Step 8A, if you can, look into doing a mega backdoor Roth IRA. Not every company will allow their employees to do it, but if you have access to it, it can be a good way to save up a lot of extra money. And then step 8B, invest the remaining portion of your money into some kind of investment like real estate or stocks. Although I will say, if your goal is to reach Coast Fi and travel the world, real estate might tie you down a little bit, so putting your money into an ETF might make more sense for you. Following these steps will help you build up a nest egg as quickly as possible, which you can then start getting it invested into the market. By reaching Coast Financial Independence, I no longer have to worry about saving for retirement if I don't want to. Even if you don't decide to pack up your life and go live on a beach and teach surfing lessons for the next 40 years, I think just having the freedom of knowing that you could pack up everything and leave without sacrificing your future financially is the most valuable part of Coast Financial Independence to me. But let me know what you think about Coast Financial versus fire. Also, go ahead and run these numbers yourself on the compound interest calculator I linked in the description. And let me know how close you are to achieving Coast Fi or maybe what age you already achieved it at. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, make sure to both subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time.